I want to tell you a story about the Rubik's Cube. Years ago, my first job out of college was I worked at Sweetwater Sound making, uh, selling audio equipment. So perhaps even some of my subscribers were at one point customers of mine. And we, th that was a telephone job, right? I'm in a cubicle on the phone selling equipment all day, every day. And so I could get bored occasionally, long conversations or leaving lots of voicemails, or which wasn't much to do sometimes. And so one year, my wife got me a Rubik's Cube, kind of the traditional inexpensive Rubik's Cube that you can get at just about any store. And I was excited because it was something for me to kind of fidget with at, with my hands uh, at my desk while I was, you know, on long phone conversations or whatever. So I was excited to have something to fidget with, and I was also excited to eventually, theoretically, learn how to solve the thing. Well, I sat there for many days, and I would pick it up when I had a moment, and I would sit there and think, how hard could it be? I know what the solved cube looks like. Surely I can figure this thing out and solve the cube on my own. I'm a smart guy. I know what a solved cube looks like. I should be able to figure this out. How hard could it be? Right? Well, I had that cube sitting at my desk in a cute little cube holder for a really long time. Uh, one, of my, one of my bosses would come up occasionally while I was on the phone and would solve the cube while I was on a call and would just sit it back down solved, all smug and arrogant, and I would think, that's, that's incredible, good for you, I can't do that yet. And it was frustrating, because I, to this day, I still feel like I'm a pretty smart dude, I should be able to figure this thing out, and I just couldn't. I could get like one side solved, but when it came to getting like the second layer or whatever, kind of like this, I just, I got there occasionally on accident, did not know how to get there, and certainly didn't know how to get the final side without messing up all the other sides. Well, the, what changed for me, uh, fast forward many, many years, I am now a dad, and my kid, who's in middle school, has gotten really into cubing. And he, like, he's real fast. Like He would have done this in about nine seconds where I'm still working on it. But what was interesting was he uh, introduced me to this idea that you can, getting close, that there are just algorithms that you learn. You learn in this situation, you do these four moves and this happens. And then from there you go here and you do these four moves and you're just memorizing a lot of algorithms that someone much smarter than myself figured out. And that felt like a big, like aha moment for me. Because then all I had to do was essentially memorize things, which that's something that I can do. And so from there, I just learned a real basic set of movements that allowed me to do what I'm doing right now, which is to get to the point where I can almost have the whole thing solved. Did I get there intuitively? No. Did I learn this on my own? No. Was that the goal from the beginning? Yeah, I really wish that I was the kind of guy who could just intuitively solve a Rubik's Cube, but I'm not. So I learned shortcuts. I learned a process. I learned a procedure that allows me to solve this in a couple of minutes. Now, there are better procedures with different algorithms, more to memorize, that allow you to solve this thing in like 10 seconds or less. The world record, I believe, is around two seconds, which is just bonkers. Point being, just because I can recognize what a good solved cube looks like, right? To the naked eye, we can all see, oh, this is a solved cube, does not mean that I can get there on my own. It's the same with making music or really with any piece of art. Just because you know what a good song sounds like doesn't necessarily mean you can just reverse engineer that and make great sounding music. There are unintuitive parts of the process that you need to learn. Now, can you learn it on your own? Yes. Technically, if you sit there in your studio, clicking around on your software, messing around with microphones and other pieces of equipment, you can eventually get there and learn it all on your own. Just like I suppose I could have gotten here on my own. However, I learned a formula. I learned a process that got me there, whereas doing it on my own did not. 
right? Over 15 years later, I still had not solved this on my own. I follow one 10 minute YouTube video and now I can solve the video or I can solve the cube. That's a big, big, big deal. So if you find yourself thinking, I'm going to figure this out on my own. First of all, I applaud your ingenuity. However, I would encourage you, if you're not making the progress you want to make, you might be stuck there forever. So go with someone who has gone before you, who has learned some of the shortcuts that allow you, that don't seem intuitive, but then once you learn them, you realize, oh, oh, cool. That solves the problem for me and go from there. It's not a lesser thing. It's just a way to get to the thing that you want to get to. For me, I wanted this to be solved with these hands without having to ask my kid to solve it for me every time. You probably want to have recorded, mixed, and released great sounding music, but it's not happening yet for you. If not, find someone, either me or someone else, who has done it before, who has gone before you, who has learned a lot of the shortcuts and the tricks and the algorithms that make it happen, and then immerse yourself in their content until you learn the moves and are making your own music. This is why Home Studio Corner exists. This is why I create courses like my mixing course, for example, I'll link it below, that walks you through a five-step process that I've learned over the last couple of decades of making music that gives you a process to follow, a tested, tried, and true process that will help you get better results. I also have a recording course, a songwriting course, and a mastering course, all with that same idea in mind. I figured it out, so you don't have to. You can just apply what I've learned to your music and make great sounding music. All right, this was weird. I don't even know if I'll ever post this video, but the idea of relating making music to solving a Rubik's Cube seems like a pretty powerful one. So I wanted to share that one with you today. Thanks for watching. See ya.